I'm like the the man behind the scenes. That's my role. Is that I like to be behind the microphone. You're the Wizard of Oz. The instead, Wizard of Oz. Instead of in front, yeah. Not really, like, I'm not... Uh, <clears throat> the Wizard like, of WNCW. Yeah, not, not, you know, like, not I diabolical. I like that. You should, or, you should make t-shirts. Yeah. The Wizard of WNCW. Uh, <laughs> You're listening to The Wizard, WNCW. <laughs> Kev Russell on WNCW, thank you for taking time to speak with us. Oh, heck yeah. Looking forward to another Shiny Rib show here at the Albano Skunk Music Festival in Greer, South Carolina. Um, it's been a while since you've been through and played for us in Spindale. What has been going on in the past couple of years? And tell us about your new record. Um, yeah, man, last couple of years uh, has been really making this new record. I made it maybe, will it be two years in, 20, in, in uh, February of 24? It'll be two years ago. So a year and a half ago, roughly, I made that record. Uh and uh, really, since I was in Spindell, as I've changed a lot of personnel, the band the band is it's like half half old people and half young people now. So which used to be it was mostly old people like me, <laughs> but I got we had like one or two young people, you know, <laughs> and they were surly as well. <laughs> so, but we've added some uh, we've had some turnover in in our ranks, which you know is uh, challenging, but. Um, it's also uh, helps you reinvent yourself, because I, I base what I do largely on the personnel that are that I'm working with. It has to do with their skill set, their personalities, their uh, interest in the music, and all those things that people bring to bear on a collaborative group like this. So the band's totally different. It's really I've transformed the band. We made this record with Steve Berlin of Los Lobos fame, and. Uh, he really set about to make wanted to make a record that would challenge my my fans, my hardcore fans, and maybe uh, bring in some new fans. So that was sort of how he spitballed his uh, his production uh, vision for Transit Damage, which is what the record uh, became called after we made it. Uh, he chose a bunch of songs from a, uh, from a bunch of demos I sent him. For old songs, like Gorge era songs, all the way through new songs I had written. Just some of my favorite stuff that I, I had I had no way of, of of putting it together into a cohesive whole, you know, but I thought that would be what he would be good at is is taking the some of the songs and putting them together into a at least a conceptually consistent uh, collection. How different is it? Because I haven't heard it yet. I'll 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 witness this later tonight, but Yeah. Uh, what is what is the secret sauce? You know, the secret sauce I think is just the the uh, the studio that we were in. It's called the Finishing School, and it's a it's a world class uh, small little uh, house studio in North uh, Austin. Um, it, it's it's been it's been wired by a guy named Jim Valentine. Uh, it's just incredible sounding uh, the gear they have there. Uh, Jim himself. Uh, the guy who designed the studio did the engineering, so we had. The, it's always good to have the designer of the studio doing the engineering, because <laughs> they can squeeze it for all it's worth. Mm. Uh, so he was in part of our team, and then the core band, which was me, uh, my bass player Mason Handcammer, uh, a drummer Fred Mondujano, and then uh, and then a great keyboard player uh, uh, Dan Creamer, also known as Fancy Jenkins. <laughs> that's a, uh, yeah. That's the best name for a keyboard player. <laughs> yeah, Fancy <right> Jenkins. <laughs> so, uh, or Dancy Jenkins. Uh, anyway, it was a core, great core core band, and we just uh, locked in and really, uh, really just got off on the music, uh, creating very, I think, vibrant tracks that have live energy in them. With playing with a core band. Uh, I know that's such a, a challenge for you, Kev. Always a challenge. It is a challenge for me in recorded music because I get into the studio and, you know, like you can't sing super loud into microphones. They're not made to do that. Where I'm used to, I'm a sort of a throwback vaudeville kind of singer. Yeah, let's talk about the contrast between your yeah. live set and your recorded work because yeah. there's a lot of there's a lot of synchronicity, you know, that syncs up. It's It's got that... It, their, your live record, I'm sorry, you on stage live, it's not so far apart from your 
uh, records, but a lot of ba bands that are great live have have trouble in from time to time. We yeah. won't say who, but yeah. you know, there's some disappointing studio records for great live bands. But right. I think you can do both. Yeah, yeah, I try to do both. It is a challenge, and I think. Yeah, there are, there are songs that are on my first couple of records that live now, they're incredible. Like, we've changed them into these amazing things. And they're good on the records, but what they've become live as they've grown, because everything, all songs grow through the live performance over time. So that's what's fun. I, a lot of bands, I, they abandon their older material for newer material. And I get that. You have to do that uh, when you're marketing new music. But, but you really should always keep some of them them nuggets them fat nuggets that you know your fans love that always work that are always great live and so i keep a few of those sprinkled in my set all the time i, I love doing the old stuff especially the stuff that's just gotten better over time so well speaking of nuggets are there any nuggets of songs that haven't quite come to fruition yet that are still hanging out there or how does that go yeah, there's a couple of songs on the new record. There's always a couple that are hard to do live or that you can't get around to because your repertoire is so large. We have so you know enough records now. Our repertoire is mature. Can Let's you remember all your lyrics? Yeah, no, I, I have help on stage <laughs> for remembering lyrics for sure. Uh, especially stuff I haven't done in a while. I will have the lyrics in front of me on a, an iPad is what I use. Good. Uh, yeah. And I didn't used to be that way. I think my phones made me dumber, but um, <laughs> <laughs> I think you're but, right. Yeah. But yeah, uh, there's there's a couple on the new record that we haven't we've rehearsed them, and we could do them, but we just haven't done them for whatever reason. I don't know. So what is like life? I'm sorry. What is like life for Kev? Oh, um, uh, I mean, life life for me is. I mean, most of my life is pretty humdrum, pretty average, uh, like everybody else's life. You know, uh, I have family, and uh, we sit around at home uh, on our phones most of the time. They're you know? in Texas, <laughs> in our own little bubbles of, what, what's of your, personal entertainment. What's your What's your view out the uh, kitchen window? Oh, uh, my view out the kitchen. What well, you know? I, I have an open kitchen that opens onto my backyard. That uh, it's really nice view. I have a pool out there, and I have uh, some really nice trees. A really nice uh, Spanish oak tree. Uh, our trees have taken a beating lately, so I really uh, appreciate the trees I have left. I've lost some, lost some really nice trees. Is that from drought? Uh, drought and freezes. We had a huge uh, ice storm last winter that took out a lot of trees. A lot of live oaks got broken by that. The ice got so heavy on the limbs. Oh. It was so heavy. Yeah. What so. about where you're at? Where is that exactly? <clears throat> That's Austin, Texas. Yeah, but out you're not um, in the city right? oh yeah i'm down south like far south austin okay technically out of the city limits but still uh and i can't vote in city elections or anything but uh you're controlled by austin that's right <laughs> yeah yeah my address still says austin thanks um tell us about austin because uh how many books could be written or how many have already been written uh like what's your relationship with austin texas Oh gosh! Well, it goes way back to when I was a kid. I mean, you start as a kid. For me, I was uh, told about Austin by my uncle Jimmy and my mom's brother, and uh, he'd talk about Jerry Jeff. He'd play Jerry Jeff and Willie and Waylon, and uh, talk about Austin. And then my brother would come to Austin. Uh, he was a track guy, uh, cross country runner, and he would come in for the state relays, the big state track meet they have every year it's a big deal and uh and he came to austin from beaumont where we lived and he would come back from austin and see like his hair had gotten lighter and his skin was like more tan and he was glowing and you could just tell like he, <laughs> he had a great time austin in austin glow yeah he had an austin glow uh, so when did you know <laughs> what your future would hold uh you know i, I mean i guess i didn't know it but looking back i I can see that I, as of my seven, eight years old, I was trying to talk my friends into learning instruments and starting a band, you know? So right. <laughs> that started that young for me, that I am literally living my dream. So, and uh, I feel so fortunate I've been able to live it as long as I have. Yeah, and we are blessed with that fortune as well. It's amazing, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, new record, lots of good things. 
what else? What's in the near horizon? Gosh, you know, uh, we had a uh, we had a dear my dear friend uh, Alice Spencer, who was the number one Shiny Soul sister. She uh, quite abruptly quit uh, quit the band in the middle of tour this year, uh, and it's only been about a month or so ago. Uh, so that's really um, that's been a gut punch, to be honest. So. And it's, but it's made me sort of reflect on where I'm at now, uh, what, where I've been, what I've achieved. Just take some accounting for, for what, what I've done. Because the Shiny Ribs thing was, was like kind of a, kind of a, uh, it felt like a, a last minute, you know, bomb in, in, at the end of the game to me. It was a hell of After the boards? After the Gordons, the Shiners felt a little bit like a Hail Mary for me at that point in my career when I was like about 40, you know. So it seems so logical now. It seems so logical, yeah, but at the time I didn't know. Like the Gordons was, I was leaving behind something that worked. It was a big deal. Yeah, but it also felt like it was over. So, yeah. you know, uh, emotionally, musically, I, it was just time to move on. But uh, so that's kind of how I feel now, you know. This is like one of those deals like, uh, it's made me take an accounting. I want to get to the end of the year, and next year I might, uh, I might, I might take a little time off and just, uh, just sort of reflect. And and as well, I should say I lost my father this year uh, around Easter, so I didn't really have time to 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 grieve. I mean, of course I'm grieving, but but I had to go right into touring. You know, putting out a record and touring. And I just had to put it aside a little bit, so. I would like to take some time for myself next wow. year for, for some of that. Do you ever think about band leaders like yourself? Because it seems very interesting that it was so hard that uh, your bandmate left. Yeah. And and I've, I've witnessed uh, band leaders that have uh, had these intense, close relationships with their bandmates. But all of those things change over time, and, it, it, and it's completely different reactions and uh, styles of how you lead the band and what your relationship is. Can yeah. you can you comment on those dynamics? Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, it's it's pretty interesting. I, I mean, I have a lot of uh, thoughts about how I manage the band. I'm pretty, and this is how I do a lot of things in my life. I'm I'm pretty passive and sort of uh, I let kind of let things sort of be what they're going to be, and I like to let give people space to be who they want to be. There's a fine line, though, at some point, especially with the Shiny Ribs thing. That's why I wanted to do it, because I wanted, I wanted to operate within a benevolent dictatorship huh. is really what I wanted. So, but, uh, you know, but I'm a real chill person, and I give people second, third, fourth chances, you know, because I just, that's just the kind of person I am. I believe in that. So, it's not, it doesn't make for the most defined um, uh, management style. <laughs> <laughs> you're not you're not micromanaging anything. I'm not micromanaging anybody, and but sometimes I do. But what it leads to sometimes is I, I sometimes will lose my temper or get angry about a situation if it hadn't been dealt with by the parties involved, whoever it may be. There's been a lot of those little things through the years, and you, you know, because everybody to me are grown, grown ass people. You know, it's <laughs> like, and they can handle it. They can right. handle a disagreement or something with each other. It, you just got to deal with other people. You know, it's, everybody that works has to deal with who they work with. You don't really get to choose, you know. So I feel like bands should be the same way. Uh, so, but sometimes people can't solve their problems and it becomes my problem. And then I could sometimes get kind of mad. But <laughs> So you're not James Brown up there flashing the five. No. I, I'm a really chill boss. I mean, I'm very nice to everybody. I pay them as well as I possibly can and... And I try to be, you know, a friend, a good person to them. And uh, and when I do have to fire them, I give them plenty <laughs> of notice and I give them severance pay. You know, I take it care happens. of them. It um, happens. I love how you can quote so many different songs within the same song. It's just <laughs> a superpower or something. I, I, I don't ever imagine how I could do that. It's just wonderful to watch. What do you, What goes through your mind when you're doing that? Is that is that on the fly? Is that rehearsed? Well, it, it, it initially when it happens, it's on the fly. So, but some of the things you do on the fly, on any given night, if it worked really well, you're going to do it again. So then it becomes 
expected and scripted. But it's still fun because the, most audiences have never heard it. So uh, for us in the band, it's like we know it's coming, and, and we know. It's, but but for the audience, they don't know it's coming, and it just it's a thrill. And but then within that, I will make up stuff. Things will pop in my head. Like last night in Asheville, I had sweet sweet emotion coming to my head during a song. Aerosmith. Aerosmith. <laughs> it's never happened before. Wow. Ah. And I went with it, and everybody's like, "That was awesome." <laughs> Tell us about your run here at Skunk Fest. You've had, I don't know how many shows at Skunk Fest. I love the uh, Skunk Fest, especially where you picked up the preacher's robe from Zig. Oh yeah. Tell us about that. I still have. Tell that us about your experience robe. here at Skunk. Man, we I mean, we go way back with these skunks. I think we might have met them, maybe at, I don't know, Mitch's Festival down in Florida, Riverhawk or somewhere like that, but. We met them and a whole crew around them, you know, that go to these festivals. And I don't know, it's just you meet some people and you just feel a kinship with them. I don't, they just are open, friendly, welcoming, lovely people. Uh, Zig and that whole crew. And all these folks that are, that are the whole periphery of this community. Uh, so, yeah, we just became friends with them. The Gords did. That's how we met them. And, uh... They were. They just wanted to party, and we partied with them. And, yeah. Uh, you know, it's just funny how it happens. You you just sort of fall into these friendships, and then they end up last. Next thing you know, it's been twenty five years. <laughs> do you still have those robes? I do. I have that robe he gave me. It's, it's on a mannequin in my studio. It's a very creepy mannequin. It's um. <laughs> well, the story. <clears throat> I've I've not told this story yet, and it's worth telling is uh, how Zig got the preacher's robe was that he was contracted to um, refurbish what was an old church, Yeah, I think, was right. the story. Mm -hmm. And these preacher's robes were in there. It was the black church and just exquisite purple robe for yeah. the preacher. Yeah. And speaking of James Brown, when <laughs> you were here, however many years ago that was, yeah. and the robe was unveiled, it was the... Uh, James Brown collapsing on stage moment where Zig helped bring you back. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> it was great. Oh, that was great. Yeah. That was great. That was, yeah, I think we just got that robe. It was a new thing we were using. <laughs> it's on his last legs now, man. It's been in the shop. I can see something wrong with it. I'm going to have to get another one, I guess. Well, it's got a rich history nonetheless. Just like me, man. It's just Yes. <laughs> you put it in the shop. How do you how do you put everything in perspective? Do you think about the whole sum of Kev Russell, or do you always keep looking forward? How does it work? Lately, I think about the whole sum and everything I've done. The, I mean, I just didn't really stop to think about it. I just did it, you know. And I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, I mean, really, I have very little formal musical training or knowledge. I'm it's totally self-taught. Uh, I didn't know how to write a song. I just wanted to write songs, so I just did it uh and that just led me to through all these relationships and adventures and uh you know just my whole life is like been i've been the soundtrack to my own life i guess is what it, it's pretty cool you know uh just as just as i dreamed it really as a kid uh, i mean it's not exactly how i dreamed it of course but but it's been, uh, to look back now, it's amazing. I've been looking back and seeing the whole thing more than I have ever done before. What's left on the list? You know, I want to play The Sphere, I guess. <laughs> have you seen The Sphere? Uh, was that the uh, U2 show? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that seemed pretty trippy. It's super trippy. That'd be really fun. I, mean, I don't know if they could pull that off here at the Skunk Fest, but we could do uh, <laughs> like the redneck version, perhaps. <laughs> Here in the nap shack. Right. The nap shack. It could be a, a, a hemisphere, at least. The Zig Dome. The Zig Dome. Zig Dome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, tell us about Zig. Do you have any stories about Zig? Because the, he doesn't get nearly enough uh, love. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. He does get love. But just oh, yeah. saying that we don't talk about Zig. We talk about you artists. But he's the man behind the oh, whole thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, Zig is... He's... Uh, Gosh, how do you describe Zig? He's just, he is the, 
Uh, he's a trickster. He's like a merry prankster in, in, in the best sense of the word. You know, he's he's always messing with you, always twisting your brain. He li- he likes to mess with people's minds, you know. <laughs> uh, but he likes to have a good time, too, with everybody. And so he's just uh, he's the kind of guy that can just make shit happen, you know. He's one of those people that people want to do whatever Zig wants to do. It's like, yeah. And it's it's always fun, uh, and he's he's just always been somebody I looked up to in that regard, and and I always enjoyed uh, throwing puns back and forth with him. He's he's quite the punster, you know. Uh, and um, his curation of the music, though, and I don't know if it's all him; it's probably a collective. But you know, I give him a lot of credit for the curation of the festival, which is always so well done. He's got. Really great taste, uh, I think. I mean, I've never, never heard a clunker on this stage. Right. Well, there was that one guy, but other than that, <laughs> it's one in a thousand, maybe. <laughs> wow, Kev Russell, it's such a great time talking to you. What did I leave out? What do you want to say? Yeah, I can't think of anything else, man. I like uh, just uh, you know. Stay good. Be good to each other, you know. And, uh, yeah, what do we need? To, yeah, like what's the positive message? Yeah. I mean, we need to just be good to each other and, you know, stop fighting with people. Stop arguing about things that don't, just don't matter, you know. Yeah. It's like, this just made up stuff. I guess stop, let's stop arguing about fairy tales. <laughs> I like that. That's my best advice. Kev Russell on WNCW and Southern Songs and Stories. Thank you so much. I know you've done this before, but do you want to do another one? Yeah. Now, remember that you can read it straight or you can be not so straight with your comments outside of the uh, the legal yeah. radio station letters and whatnot. Yeah. Hey, people, this is old shiny ribs. You're listening to The Wizard on WNCW Spindale, WSIF. Wilkesboro. What's the f- What's the f- <laughs> Hey, ladies and gentlemen, this is Shiny Ribs. You're listening to WNCW Spindale. WSIF. Wilkesboro. What's the up? What's the up? What's the up?